Welcome to Rough Cuts. Tonight we'll have the latest movie news, post-Oscar discussion, and Game of Thrones preview. If you wanted applause, we would have joined the circus. You're watching Rough Cuts. I'm Dar Women, and with me today is George and Ellen. How's it going, guys? Doing great. Good. All right, starting off with movie news. Rumor has that Paramount is already planning on creating a sequel for Jack Reacher, an action film featuring Tom Cruise. The movie grossed about $73 million domestically and has crossed $250 million mark worldwide to be considered for a sequel directed by Christopher McQuarrie. Just crossed over $200 million wor worldwide. Well, that's not $200 50 million, it seems Paramount has begun to move forward with a possible sequel to Mission Impossible 5, and another action film starring Tom Cruise and director McQuell <laughs> will likely be made before another Reacher movie simply because it's a guaranteed hit. Even if a Reacher sequel were in the works, it would be several years mm -hmm. before it hits theaters. So what do you guys think? Um, Tom Cruise is, he's not bankable as he used to be. Um, with like Top Gun and, yeah. and yeah. like movies yeah. like that. So maybe internationally he does better just because not a lot of people know his personal life. Just in the US, like his life is followed to a T. Like his divorce, yeah. like with his kid, like. With his religion. Religion, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm not surprised it only hit 70 million, but. And it know. didn't get the critical reviews. Yeah. I heard it got fairly good critical reviews. Yeah. From everyone I talked to, they say it was pretty good. But it isn't anything that, like, it's not Mission Impossible 4. Like, when yeah. that came that out, was that was a good. big deal. Yeah, but that's Mission Impossible. I think m even if it wasn't Tom Cruise, well, it's probably Well, it's Tom Cruise for a yeah. whole thing, but then, it, yeah, you could argue that maybe with, without Tom Cruise in the new Mission Impossible, maybe you don't really need him for it. Maybe it would just be bankable based off the name itself, not Tom Cruise. Yeah. Behind I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that might work, though. Do you I think the sequel will go anywhere? Like yeah. Reacher 2? I mean, I didn't see <coughs> I didn't mm -hmm. see Jack Reacher, but what I've heard is just like a basic ac action movie. So basic, I think it would probably be easy to make a sequel out mm -hmm. of it. They make sequels out of everything anyway. Yeah. It is bankable, yeah. Yeah. Scary movie, so. All right, moving on to nerd news. The next Captain America film, The Winter Soldier, will go into production soon, with Chris Evans returning to his role as Captain America. And Ant and Anthony and John Roos is stepping in to direct. The film takes its title from a storyline from the Ed Burke Baker penned storyline of the same name in which Cap's World War II sidekick Bucky, thought dead, is revived as a Soviet assassin. Marvel Studios president Kevin Fain described the movie as a political thriller in, in step with the Bourne film. It's part of the Marvel's efforts to diversify its movies as Ferg, as Ferg said to for, for Substance to the new sequels. Captain America was the war movie. Thor was the fantasy movie. Cars 2, oh, oh, Captain America 2, will be the political thriller, and Guardian of the Galaxy will be the sci fi epic mm -hmm. mixed with comedy. Uh, is that a good idea? Yeah, um, probably. Captain America did pretty well, box, box office wise and critic wise. What did you guys think about the movie? I, like, I actually never saw them. <coughs> I've only seen the Avengers. Okay. Avengers. Okay, so I'm the only one. Okay. I've seen um, like other, like I think I like I saw Thor, which was really good. Um, just talking about just Captain America, I thought it was a lost opportunity for them to focus on World War Two. They kind of like skimmed over it, like oh this happened, but they just got kind of skipped over it and stick with like like modern sci-fi, sci like with a cosmic cube and stuff like that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, born film, everyone loves it, so I think. It's going to get them a lot. Uh, Captain America will be popular. Um, Captain America ranked between all the heroes. He's probably like the least favorite behind like maybe Thor, maybe over Thor. It really depends. Like uh, like Iron Man, always bankable. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So like I like the different approach Marvel is taking. Uh, now, I don't know if the genre they're aiming for. I think they're kind of aiming too high because all Marvel films are trying to like add comedy mm -hmm. to all their films. Um, so I don't know how serious they're gonna make it. Um, and I have 
read the story they described, it is really good. I just don't know if they could fit that in one film or if they were just going to, like, do, like, what Harry Potter, like, split it into two and make it something worth watching. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the comedy thing, I think you could add, like, comedy to something that's, like, really serious. Like, oh, like, absolutely. If you, if you, like, if it flows correctly, I think it'll work. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you're talking about a guy who kills, assassin kills people. Like, yeah. how exactly how do you add comedy to that? Like, you could. Maybe not that part. You could say that about Hulk. Like, he just smashed stuff. But you actually <laughs> see a guy with a sniper shooting people off. Like, it's kind of hard to make a kidding. Like, how, like, how do you make that? Maybe not that part. Maybe, like, other parts. Of and it, it just seems yeah. with Captain America, they're trying to aim not for uh, the kids, mm-hmm. but more for the adults. With that, that, and you're trying to bank on that mm. as well. And they need to appeal to teenagers too. Yeah, definitely. That's, I think, I think, I think either way it's gonna make money. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Finally, in movie news, Brian Singer said he will fix the problems that plagued X Men: The Last Stand with his upcoming new X Men film, The Day of the Future's Past. The third installment of the series was criticized for being all over the place and for killing off major characters in the franchise since the director Matthew Vaughn. Since the director Matthew Vaughn swooped in to fix much of the damages with the reboot X-Men First Class, the 2014 sequel brings Singer back into the director's chair with a very unique opportunity to do a sequel to, re- to a reboot of his own franchise. That's also going to tie into the original film. In a new interview, Singer hinted at the possibility that Jean Grey and Cyclops could be returning to the big screen. He also mentioned how Days of Future's Past will be setting on multiple different timelines. In, some, in somewhat related news, Matthew Vaughn, director of Kick-Ass and X-Men First Class, has joined Josh Trank's Fantastic Four reboot as a producer. Uh, so do we believe Brian Singer has a chance to fix the problem? I thought the problems were already fixed with X-Men First Class. No, it wasn't. They, uh, I don't know if you guys watched it or not, but First Class, they continue on with the storyline like they didn't have like they didn't have the original five there they had totally different people the only thing the same is the fact that it's xavier and magneto and mystique well that's not even in the continuity either okay. like that's something they added for the film um but that's the only thing that they kept they kept it going so i think it's possible to be good like because i know he didn't have because i know he was busy with superman with x Three, so he didn't really have a lot of control over he didn't it. Direct the third one for Ryan yeah, Reynolds. that's what I mean. Like um, he 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 said went with Superman, and everyone knows how bad that tanked. But yeah. um, yep. Um, I think it's possible to be good. Like everything po- has pos- possibility yeah. to be good. Yeah. I, like yeah, I'm just surprised he didn't just reboot it from the start. I wish First Class honestly to be re- like I love the film and all, but it should have just been rebooted from the start. I like. I mean, I've only seen the first one in First Class, and mm-hmm. like I really like First Class. So I, I didn't mind the first one. I thought it was. Oh, I thought mm-hmm. it was a pretty good movie. What do you guys think about Fantastic Four at all? I haven't watched it because I thought, like, I'm not a big it's Fantastic Four fan. I mean, I've seen both of them. They're not good. I mean, like, not. I mean, they're not really good. I mean, I think it's just because like there's a lot of miscasting. So if they rebooted, mm-hmm. like, if they get good, ca- I think if they get a good cast. Yeah, I, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I just think Sony is just bank, banking on the fact that uh, uh, first class did so well and and they're kind of hoping that Fantastic Four will follow the same. I don't think Fantastic Four has fan appeal as much as like X-Men yeah. or Avengers I think it's just or a, Spider-Man. I think it's because like with the last movie, like it just what, like the last two movies, like they were really like kid friendly and they were not cast well in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, all right. The weekend Bill After Dark is showing The Man with the Iron Fist at 9.30 p.m. at midnight in Smack Room 24 on Saturday. When we return our panel, we'll be discussing the winners and losers of the Oscars. All right, who's been making a mess for the studio again? Eat chips and pretzels and leaving cups and everything? Beat and Potter Works in downtown Lancaster is your creativity destination. Something new awaits you with every visit. Sit down and let your imagination decorate your own piece of pottery. Visitors can select from over 250 plus combinations of pottery and paints. If you're looking for a quick gift, string your own necklace for that personal flair or design a bracelet or a pair of earrings at the beading studio. The Beadworks and Pottery Works in Lancaster. Creativity for everyone, activities for all ages. 91.7 FM WIXQ, Millersville's number one music source. The university's student-run radio station. 
tune in daily to hear a variety of music beyond the top 40s. Want to be a DJ? All majors are welcome. Email operationsmanager at wixq.com for more information. Visit us online at wixq.com. 91.7 FM, WIXQ, your number one music source. leading to the Oscars. Here are the winners of the night. Best Picture, Argo, directed by Ben Affleck. Best Director, Ang, Ang Lee for Life of Pi. Best Actor, Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln. Best Actress, Jennifer Lawrence for Silver Linings Playbook. Best Supporting Actor, Christoph Waltz for Django Unchained. Best Supporting Actress, Anne Hathaway for Les Miserables. Original screen, Screenplay, Django Unchained, Quentin Tarantino. Adapted Screenplay, Argo, Chris Patero. Animated Feature, Pixar's Brave. Visual effects, Life of Pi, and there are other winners which are not, which we I don't have at the moment. Um, but what are our thoughts on the winners? Um, let's start with Best Picture. I don't. I love Argo. Argo. I, I loved, loved Argo. it. I loved okay, it. Okay. I loved it. It was my favorite movie of Me the too. year. Okay. Um, I liked it. It was good, but I don't think it deserves Best Picture. What do you think deserves? What do you think deserves it? Lincoln, obviously. Oh, really? I didn't My parents will agree with you. I didn't yeah. like Lincoln it, all that much. Lincoln was it, long it, and tedious and boring. I mean, very well what acted. Kind of Just keep going. <laughs> it was very long. Um, I liked Argo yeah, so it's, much better. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of people going out to watch it, but I thought it was better made. Like, it's harder to have a good movie where all you people do is just have a conversation. It's mm -hmm. easy just to have, like, an Avengers movie where you have explosions everywhere. Mm -hmm. But to have, like, two people talking and have some meaning to it, it's, I oh, think, it a lot was, more. I'm not saying it wasn't a good movie. I just liked Argo much better. Um, Argo just felt like a regular, nothing stand out to me on that. I thought it was well made, but I fast. Can, I, I can know. say that. My problem with Lincoln was, like, it probably was a more, like, a personal thing. Like, the government, everything with the government kind of bored me, and I was just like, ugh. Yeah, I but think then that's for Everything with the family, like, everything with, like, Deion Lewis and Sally Field and, like, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and, like, the other little kid whose name I do not know. Don't that was, re I really liked that part. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, um the best actor. That, that was, oh, that he was, of, yeah, he That was kind it. of obvious. Uh, it's really unfair to any other actor that goes up for that. Like, he, there's a reason why he hasn't done a lot of films, because every time he does one, it's amazing. Yeah, and that like, was There Will Be Blood, um, so many he others. He was wonderful in My Left Foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now he's, of, like, the first actor with three Best Actor Oscars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not, not that surprised at all. Um, no. Uh, no. Best Actress. That, I was, I, I thought it was going to go to Jessica Chastain, because, like, that was a drama, mm -hmm. and Silver Lines Playbook was, um, I didn't see Zero Dark Thirty, I saw Silver Lines Playbook, she was phenomenal. She was great, she was great. So, I mean, I, I was, I, I was haven't happy. watched that, the only thing I watched her in is Hunger Games, I don't think that's a fair uh, way to judge She was great in Hunger acting. Games, too, <laughs> like though. Games. Well, it's fine, like, I, I'm not a big fan of the book, but that's besides the point. Okay. Um, no, she deserved it. Supporting, yeah, supporting Sporting actress. Actor. I was surprised. Now, having not seen Django, I was expecting either Robert De Niro or Tommy Lee Jones to win. I wasn't. I I'm just happy that Django Unchained got something. Like, that was a great film, even though it came out later in the year. It was a great yeah. film, um, so at least it got something. This, like, might, this might get people mad at me, because, but you know, I might have mentioned in the last show, I'm not as big of a fan of Django Unchained. I just thought it was okay. I didn't hate it. Like... I, was, I mean, the only thing I got really mad about was, like, how come Leonardo DiCaprio wasn't nominated? Because, in my opinion, he was the best part of the film. And, like, that was, like, that mm. was, I, I was engrossed into everything he was in. Honestly, I did like Christoph Waltz. There's a little I bias did. there, but okay. Um, anyway, I did like Christoph Waltz. I thought he was very good. I'm happy that he won the Oscar. Good for him. But I thought the movie was just, like, okay. Well, well it's better than having where uh, 007, the new Skyfall, like, the only thing he... That movie one was a soundtrack, and that was Adele. No, I think it was uh, didn't it sound. It was a tie. Didn't it? Sound. Get, yeah, but was yeah. There was like a sound. I think it was sound editing. Like editing. it tied with Zero Dark Thirty. It did. 
So when something I'm not gonna get. Awards that no one care about. Okay. Yeah. Um, best picture. We did the best picture. Brave. Oh no, best uh, animated picture. Oh, feature. Brave. Yeah. Um, I have only seen Brave and Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> me too. And even though Wreck It Ralph has these demon bugs that scare me very, very much, I still wanted that one to win because mm -hmm. it was much, much better. I thought um, both. Than were, Brave. I thought both were okay. I thought Wreck It Ralph was definitely better. But I still thought I was like, eh. Neither of them are Toy Story um, 3, which I is the problem. I thought Frankie Weenie was pretty good. It's, I don't know. That's a like, Tim Burton. Yeah. That could um, still win. I don't know. Uh, Frankie Weenie. Uh, Brave. I, I Brave just felt like it was way too short. I, like, I just didn't like it. They stretched it, the plot out too much. The plot, there wasn't much substance there. Yeah. yeah like, it was compared bizarre. to other Pixar films, like, oh. that is, like, lower end compared to all the yeah. oh, good absolutely. ones. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Um. Uh, supporting actress, I think, was pretty obvious that we knew Anne Hathaway was going to win. It was oh, forecast yeah. like a year <laughs> before, like it's everyone knew it was going to happen. I think she, she deserved it. She was the best part about that film. I, like I haven't watched it for I, like I just hear a lot of good I'm things a about it. Yeah. I like the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish I could like it. I want to like it, but it's okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, director Ang Lee for Life of Pi. <laughs> that was a great movie. I didn't. See I it. really want to watch that. Um, that was a great, I'm great. Was the CG as good as they say? Yeah. Oh um, yeah, I'm like think you think it's a real tiger and it's not. I was like really like, not like, I was really like, against like not think seeing the movie because I, I didn't like the book. I thought it was, the book was kind of boring. <laughs> it was. You don't like anything. I have not read the book. I loved the movie. I'm not saying like the topic wasn't interesting. It's just like the way it was written for me. But like I like everybody's like oh my god this movie's so good. So like it I probably great. will go see it. Yeah, it was probably will. Amazing. Yeah. Like they also won the best visual. Yeah, it's won best it visual, won best lot. cinematography, yeah. like yeah. It won and a lot. best score. It won four, which is the I like. I like listening to the score. The score's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any films that felt like it were snubbed at all? Uh, Personally, uh, the Skyfall, but that, I think that's that my was, personal I, that was that I kind of expected to get snubbed. Yeah. The Impossible. And that Naomi Watts was nominated, but I thought Ian McGregor and Tom Holland, who played her son, I thought they were also really, really good. I didn't see that. Oh, the, no one's seen The Impossible. It's, it's not a, really around. It's such a great movie. Um, it's, it, it, you feel like you're watching a documentary. That's how realistic mm -hmm. the disaster and the wounds and everything look. It's, ugh. Yeah. You're really selling me on that. Um, <laughs> you should see it, though. We'll see um, it eventually. Um, what did, ever, did everybody have any opinions on, like, the host, Seth MacFarlane? Like, how did he do? I thought he was fine. pretty good. Yeah, like, I'm reading all these things, and everybody was like... He's not good. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, more things, like, people were like, oh, my God, he's like, he said all these offensive, like, jokes about women. I'm like, he's just an the, the only one ever that was seen bad. Uh, Family Guy. The yeah. only one that was bad is when he had that, when he did the We Saw Your Boobs song. That was bad. But that was supposed to be bad, so I yes. was like, okay. Yeah, I didn't mind exactly. it. It was like, I mean, I thought, I, I laughed. And, like, oh, everybody I, I, was, I laughed. Everybody was in on the joke, and, like, everybody, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, like, obviously it's supposed to suck because of what mm -hmm. James T. Kirk said, but, you yeah. know. All I right. thought he was pretty good. Yeah, I thought he was, too. All right, when we come back, we will be, discuss we will be discussing Game of Thrones' new trailer and the series review, so stick around for Rough Cuts. <laughs> Safety Net can catch all of your computer problems. Simply go to the Safety Net page located on the Millersville University website to find information on getting rid of viruses and keeping your computer up to date. Safety Net, the solution to your computer problems. This is Mike. This is where he's sleeping tonight. That's his pillow. He could have been upstairs using Jen's pillow if he would have stuck to just drinking that six pack. But boys will be boys. And one six pack turns into two, and then that turns into shots. And before you know it, you've an empty bottle of vodka and a full toilet bowl. Javadis is the best place to get lunch at the Ville. They serve breakfast all day for you late risers. Bring friends and play a board game or use our free wireless internet. Grab a coffee and listen to live music on Fridays. Javadis, one good cup deserves another.
rough cuts. After months of teasers, behind the scenes videos, still images, and posters, we finally have our first real look at some footage from the third season of HBO's fantasy series, Game of Thrones. So what do you think of the trailer? Um, the trailer itself, uh, it, it was a lot of teases. Like, you see, uh, the dragon. Yeah. Like, you finally see the dragon actually flying. Um, it's a big deal if you haven't watched it, so, sorry. Uh, you see a lot of people dying. Like, that's the whole theme of Game of Thrones. Like, you just see just people murder again and again, getting backstabbed. Like, um, when I first watched the first season, like, I only watched, like, the first episode. And the first, like, how it ended with uh, the younger brother actually falling off the tower, that, w that was, I never seen that in television, ever. Yeah. Like, as a senior kid, actually, basically being uh, murdered. Um, but then from there on, like, I watched some episodes, and then I actually read the first book because it was, it was really that good. And... Uh, what, what do you think of the first season, first of all? I remember, like, I actually didn't, I actually never heard of the show until probably about two minutes before it premiered. I heard about it um, through work talk. People yeah, say it was amazing, so I just gave it, it like, a shot. My dad's like, oh, do you want to watch this? And I'm like, sure, why not? And then, like, with the first episode, I was like, I was intrigued. I wasn't, like, amazed. And I'm just like, I'm intrigued. I'll, pr I'll watch the next episode. Mm -hmm. I'll see what it is. And then once, like, that ending happened, I'm just like, oh, my God. I, like, I freaked out, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm watching it, and then it's got better mm -hmm. and better, and, yeah, so. We should probably mention that this, there's going to be spoilers for season yeah. one and two. Major so spoilers. Yeah, major, like like the one I'm going to drop right now. Um, yes. Like, the end of season one, Ned dies. Right? I was expecting someone to save him, and <laughs> and no one did, and that basically, he's still my favorite character, even after he's dead. Now Tyrion kind of took that over. Yeah. But um, it was... It, Game of Thrones has that theme where the second to last episode, they kill someone off or do something like seriously amazing, and then the last episode is usually the recap where everyone is. Yeah. Like Ned died, second to last, and then the next episode you just see everyone just head whatever they're doing. Yeah. I whatever. remember with that episode, like they sort of like cut it off like right before like the thing or the thing, and I'm like, okay, maybe he's not dead, maybe he's not dead, but uh. then like you saw the blood, and I'm like, dang it, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. I mean, I probably shouldn't have been surprised. Sean Bean dies and everything. Yeah, you just root for that guy sometimes. You do, and um, I'm just like, and like, but because it was the shock, like he was the main character, and then he's yeah. just dead, and you're like, like he's the only he? honorable person there, and he just, just because he played that way, like everyone else played political games, like mind yeah. games, and that's what led him to die. Well, you also blame on Joffrey, too. He wasn't really thinking. Can Joffrey, okay, third season, what I'm hoping for. Can Joffrey die? Please. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he does, but I don't know. Please. That was, um, I would love that because I hate that guy so much. The, for the actor's probably a really nice kid. Yeah, probably. I hate, I hate Joffrey. I hate his mother. She's really annoying. Sophie, yeah. Or she's, she's really pretty, but she's just like. No. Yeah. The only person like, I like in the land, the land is just need to die in general. Well, then you're not going to have a show. That's true. Mm -hmm. Except for, like, maybe Tyrion. But Tyrion, Tyrion can be kind of not good, but, like, I still like um, him. What, what do you mean? Like, what, what was not good about him? Like, no, 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 what, what has he done that would be, like, He just doesn't seem like a guy, like, I would completely trust. Um, I, I know. I'm the whole opposite. Like, as long as you're in his uh, self-interest, you're probably going to be on his good side. Hmm. And, um... Definitely with his family, like he's trying to like win their approval again and again with the with the battle, with like being the right hand, like doing all these things, and yet still because mm -hmm. he's a little person, he, and like his mother died in birth with him. Yeah. That like there's so much anger towards him, and even his dad like say bluntly like he wishes he's dead. He wished he was gone. Yeah. Even though he has done more than Jamie and Cersei did combined basically they yeah. kept the kingdom alive i mean like granted peter english is like my favorite in the whole show yeah th he really uh awesome. became big in game of thrones after that now he's getting movie deals P apparently now he's gonna be in the new x-men first class yeah. um we don't know exactly what he's gonna do but it, it's probably amazing like, yeah yeah i think one of the big things i'm actually looking forward to for season three is um aria aria um 
mm-hmm. the Stark's, like, youngest daughter, because, like, what, how it ended with, like, I, I don't know, because, like, now she's, like, free from, like, the whole, like, torture chamber thing with um, the other two people, Gendry and, um, I can't remember the other guy's name. Oh, um, but yeah. So, like, I'm wondering, like, what's going to happen to them? Um, Arya storyline, it's, I don't know where it's heading right now. Um, from what I understand, she's probably going to be some assassins. I don't know. Well, I, that'd be really cool, in my opinion. Yeah, probably. Like a little girl, um, and she's like, I need POV. So, second season, what what stood out for you? What, what was your opinion on the second I really, season I compared to the first? I don't know if I liked it like as mm-hmm. much as the first season. I still liked it. I think I agree with you on I that. I liked one. it a lot. And then like the ninth episode with like the whole war, I'm like, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was like the most redeeming thing they could do. And with the explosion, I'm just like, I do, I do know like HBO has been cutting costs to Game of Thrones. So they had to save money, cut scenes off. Like the whole prison break with Arya, that was supposed to be way bigger but they had to cut it down I just like for the, the battle. I kind of like the way they did that, though, because like, it was really like simple, and like, oh, they are all dead. Well, the, my friends who read the book actually told me like there was, it was way more better like if they actually mm-hmm. kept it to the book. Yeah, I think, yeah, but the war was, I think the, the way like the war was, like they didn't like switch back to, like, okay, let's see what Rob Stark's doing, let's see what Jon Snow's doing. They just like, stuck it in King's Landing we were just during, during the war. That was one of the criticisms, actually, for second season, that it was way, it was like all over the place. It was, but Like, it was kind of hard to focus, like, what is this person doing or that person, this, this, like. And actually, a lot of fans suggested that it will actually, uh, sh- sh- it should stay, like, an episode should be, like, Jon Snow half and then whoever else they yeah. want to half. So, like, you have that instead of having it cut up. Mm-hmm. You gotta wait like two weeks before you even find out what happened to Jon Snow. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's two things I want to bring up. Um, okay. One, um, I kind of want to bring up the um, Daenerys Targaryen. Yeah, I definitely. Love, a, I love her. Mm-hmm. B, the dragons look like they're getting bigger, which is awesome. It is gonna be like bigger. I'm I think I remember sure. like the final mm-hmm. shot was pretty much like her just like covered in ash and butt naked, and then there's like all like three dragons right I there. I remember that. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm just Vaguely, like, yes, I do remember that. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh. It, it, the first, second season, it was slow, like, compared With to the her, first yeah. one. Like, the first season, like, every episode, there was a cliffhanger. Something happened, yeah. and you just wanted to watch the next episode. Second season, it was less of that. Like, it would just end, like, they'll have a conversation in credits. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way it ended with, like, well, we should probably mention this, and the second season, you guys to see the walkers. Yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up, Actually. Actually, you just see a whole army of them coming, going they to the wall. They look really cool. They really do, and I don't, I don't know how they're gonna stretch out the budget just to have that happen. Like you, there's. I mean, I think they should. I think they should honestly like give the show like like kind of a little bit more money just because like it is, it is a very successful it, show. It has long lost its runner. Like it's um, produced like I think producer I believe. Because, like, they tried to negotiate costs, and HBO doesn't want to budge because they have other shows, and they're pretty much stuck to where what they have. I mean, because I think Game of Thrones is, like, one of their most successful shows, like, not just with, like, the show in general, but, like, also, because, like, it is HBO, it's, like, obviously you have to subscribe in order to watch it, mm-hmm. but then if people don't, they mm-hmm. can just buy the season, which will give them money. They, like, there's a ton of mm-hmm. merchandising for Game mm-hmm. of Thrones. I think it's one, probably one of their most successful shows, and it's a giant risk. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that, so I'm just like, like I, th- I just think they should probably give more money so that like we, can, like they can make it even cooler. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- before we end this, uh, wh- who's your favorite character or a character that you'd look forward to watching next season? Um, I said Arya. May I said Arya too. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of want to. I may. I want to know how much Jon Snow. That's bas- Yeah, basically, yeah. Because of like, I like that character a lot, and um. The way where it ended with him, like he was with those uh, wildlings, I'm just like. He had hmm. to kill one of his fellow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking for pretty much everything, really. Yeah, that's Ash. Good. Com- yep. All right. Game of Thrones returns March 31st on HBO. All right, that's all for today. Remember, this is an open show, so if you love movies, have an opinion, disagree with us, and would like to and like to be on the show, give us a shout out at roughcuts99 at gmail.com or look for us on Facebook under Rough Cuts. That's all the time we have for today. Gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. We'll see you next time on Rough Cuts.